A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture we had looked at an expression of how to generate a random variable or we had seen a mathematical formulation for generating any arbitrary distribution using the uniform 0 to 1 distribution and in this lecture we will consider certain examples to quantify that. We will first look at the exponential random variable. So, the details of an exponential random variable are already written on this slide, but uh, still I will recapitulate these. So, in general the probability density function of an exponential random variable is given like this that is uh, f x of x is lambda e to the power minus lambda x and the mean in this case uh, turns out to be 1 over lambda and it can be seen by a simple integration that the cumulative distribution function of uh, an exponential random variable takes this form and consequently we can write in general g y is this. So, for uh, an exponential random variable with a exponential parameter 1, so lambda equals 1, the expressions are here. So, let us now quickly try to write these as a MATLAB program and try to simulate this. So, we know the function that uh, the mapping needs to be minus log of u. So, let us try to do that. So, the result is already visible, but uh, still. So, the usual invocations clear all, close all, CLC that is done and now n equals say I take 10,000 samples, I have taken 10,000 samples that is there. So, u equals rand, so let me say that u is n comma 1. So, let us say that uh, let me call this exponential example. So, I will also comment this. So, the number of samples this is the and let me generate x. So, g I know I have seen that uh, we have shown that g of y is minus log of 1 of u. So, let us say lambda, I will also define lambda. Lambda equals, I will start with 1 then we can do this for other lambda. So, x equals minus 1 over lambda. times log of 1 minus u. So, this and this. So, hist u centrus say 100 hist. So, frequencies figure, I'll invoke a new figure and copy and paste, save and I will run this and 1, 2, 3, yes. So, this is uh, more or less, oh my bad, I had to correct this. So, and I will possibly add a couple more zeros to make this more constant. So, x run and 1, 2, 3. So, you can see that u is uniformly distributed whereas this is exponentially distributed. So, now since we have seen this 
let us say I want to do this say x1 is this so x2 I define for a different lambda x2 equals say I place lambda equal to 2 and hold on hist x2 this do this and run. So, you could see that there are two distinct plots, these might not directly be visible. So, what I will do is a f plot. copy, delete this, save, run. So, I will x2 and run. So, you can see the two exponential plots working like this. So, these are exponentials for two different uh, parameters. So, I can extend this to any number of uh, exponential parameters that I want. So, that said, let us look at our second example that is the complex Gaussian. So, till now we have only talked about real valued random variables, but like numbers random variables can also be complex valued, random variables can also be complex valued and the most commonly occurring complex valued random variable at least from the perspective of uh, communications is the complex Gaussian. So, a complex Gaussian random variable z is defined as a random variable x plus j y where j is naturally the square root of minus 1 and x and y are Gaussian random variables. Naturally expected value of z is expected value of x plus j times expected value of y and variance of z equals variance of x plus variance of y plus covariance of x and y. So, this is uh, how you define a complex random variable. Naturally, for complex variables, variance of x or variance of z equals expected value of mod z square minus expected value of z mod square. So, like vectors everything where we had a square gets replaced with mod square and equals x minus expected value of x into expected value of x conjugate this piece. So, this is uh, how you define the variance. So, this is how you define the covariance vector of or uh, the variance of a complex random variable. The most commonly considered complex Gaussian random variable for again from a communications perspective is a circularly symmetric. symmetric complex Gaussian abbreviated as CSCG that is or circular symmetry implies or circular symmetry is the case when variance of x equals variance of y equals variance of z by 2 and 
covariance of x y is 0. So, this is the case when a random variable is called circular symmetric. Now, circular symmetric complex Gaussian and x and y are Gaussian random variables this. So, this is a complex Gaussian random variable and uh, we will discuss a couple of more properties of the complex Gaussian random variable before we try to implement it. So, I will insert a new slide and so the probability density function of a complex Gaussian is given as f z of z equals pi sigma square minus z minus mu by sigma the whole square and sigma the variance of z mu is the expected value of z and everything here is complex. That said, so since z is a complex number, it can be represented both in the x y ordinates and the r theta coordinates. So, z equals x plus j y equals r e power j theta. So, you can say that x is the real coordinate, y is the imaginary coordinate and equivalently r is the magnitude and theta is the phase or the angle of that uh, complex random variable. So, if z is circularly symmetric complex Gaussian with 0 mean and unit variance, then r is Rayleigh distributed theta is uniform between minus pi and pi. So, r is rarely distributed and theta is uniform between minus pi and pi. Moreover, if r is rarely distributed r square is exponential rarely distributed with parameter 1 with meter 1 r square is exponential with parameter 1. So, we have this information all of this can be proven, but uh, since this is not a probability course, we would not prove this. So, let x plus j y with independent x y be this. So, x and y are independent and identically distributed with each having a variance half, which means that x is a 0 mean circular symmetric complex Gaussian with, I can represent z as 0 mean circular symmetric complex Gaussian 0, 1. So, this represents circularly symmetric circularly symmetric complex Gaussian. Equivalently, R can be represented as R e j phi. I have used theta. So, okay. theta theta is uniform between minus pi and pi and r is Rayleigh, r square is exponential with lambda 1. So, we have seen how to generate exponential. We can use this exponential to generate. So, r is Rayleigh, r square is exponential means if v is exponential 
square root of phi will be v is exponential then square root of v will be Rayleigh fine. So, we have this information. Now, let us use this information to generate a complex Gaussian random variable. So, let me save this file as complex Gaussian. So, this so you have generated like this. So, let me say instead of u I generate phi or theta the phase the uniform and this is the uniform phase the uniform phase and say at the same time let me generate u and this phase since this is between minus pi and pi. So, and uh, this phase is between minus pi and pi or 0 to 2 pi whichever way you want, but uh, I will use minus pi to pi. So, this is a range 2 pi. So, this scales between range 2 pi and subtract pi. So, if we say if u is a random variable is uniform between 0 and 1 then 2 pi w pi will be uniform between minus pi and pi which is this. So, I generated the phase. So, the phase is generated like this and u I generate as this and naturally r square let me call this r square r square I generate as this r is the square root of r square. So, this is Rayleigh now z equals r times exponential of 1 i iota times u and since this is these will be element wise products element wise product this. So, this is not element wise product as scalar multiplying a vector. So, this so I need not generate this again. So, this I will get rid of and so, I will just comment the remaining part out for now and we will talk about it later. Control R comments everything that you have selected and I will save this and run this. So, yes this has run and I have generated 1 million z's. So, z you will see is a complex double. So, this is a uniform phase this is for the magnitude magnitude square is the magnitude is really and the complex Gaussian. So, we have uh, the complex Gaussian. Now, is our turn to test this complex Gaussian 0 mean complex Gaussian with a variance 1. So, first try the sample mean of z. We will come to the sample mean and the sample variance of a random variable in the forthcoming lectures. So, mean of z and this is unusual. sorry theta that was the problem yeah, theta should be the right thing. So, save and run 
mean of z is yes a very small number and the variance of z is close to 1 I can run this again and uh, this will be even closer to 1 or this will be still close to 1. So, this is there. So, we will verify the real and the imaginary part. So, for this to be a circularly symmetric complex for z to be a circularly symmetric complex Gaussian it is real and imaginary parts should be independent and identically distributed as Gaussians. So, we will try. So, we will hist of real of x sorry hist of real of z and this is uh, slightly so I will do this for 100 so yes so Gaussian uh, Gaussian distributed clearly and if I do this for imaginary part of still Gaussian with 0 mean or uh, and mean were verified. So, covariance, so let us check whether or not, so variance of real part of z close to 0.5, variance of imaginary part of z close to half. So, both are close to half and we will uh, uh, slightly off from the means and the true variances that uh, we will explain in the next lecture why is that happening and uh, what are the reasons behind it. So, that will be covered and now we will check the covariance, covariance of real part of z and imaginary part of z which gives us the covariance matrix and the real part and the imaginary part are uncorrelated implying that we have successfully generated a 0 mean circularly symmetric complex Gaussian random variable from this or otherwise if we want we can reformulate this problem by saying that instead of uh, generating one complex Gaussian from Gaussian from two real valued uh, uniform random variables let us try to generate two Gaussians from two real valued random variables two independent Gaussians that is. So, we can also define x equals cos theta and y equals sin theta this is so this is the real part part and this is the this is the imaginary part. So, generate the real part and the imaginary part and we have generated so variance of x there has to be something wrong oh yes this one I should not be there because uh, this then turns to hyperbolic sign and hyperbolic cos. So, so of x yes save run run this from here and variance of x variance of y covariance of y and we get we wanted that uh, cos terms are still close to 0 and x is close to 0 mean of y is close to 0 fine. So, and mean of z is naturally the sum of these two which is as expected. So, we can generate two Gaussian random variables from uh, yes we can generate two Gaussian random variables from two uniform random variables. The next thing is so all the uniform distribution is a continuous distribution can we generate uh, discrete distributions from it the answer is yes we can. So, we will consider two simple examples. So, let us first explain what is a uh, uniform or what is a Bernoulli random variable and what is a binomial random variable. So, x is said to be Bernoulli between with the probability of success p if probability of x equals 0 equals 1 minus p and probability of 
x plus 1 equals p and expected value of x equals p naturally x is binary valued. So, generating this is quite simple all we have to do is save this as Bernoulli binomial example. So, I will copy this as it is and define the probability of success as p equals 0 0.2. So, the probability of success is 0 0.2 p and you can take this to be anything. So, I define the probability of success as 0 0.2 and then rather u equal uh, as usual rand n comma 1 u is n and I will write the shortcut straight away. So, you can see that uh, uniform random variable will be less than or equal to p with a probability p. This you know because uh, this is how we define the CDF. So, if I say that uh, I pick a random uniformly generated random variable between 0 and 1 the probability that uh, it will be greater than some p will be 1 minus p. So, all I have to do is check whether it is greater than p or not. So, u less than p x equals u less than p and let me type cast it to double and there you go and I will use clear all as well. get a sequence of zeros and 1s and since I know that the mean should be close to 0.2 mean of x which is close to 0.2 I can increase this say I say 0 0.003 and run and if I click here mean of x it is close to 0.3 with some margin of error I can do this. So, this is how I generate a Bernoulli random variable. For a binomial random variable we define x as binomial n comma p with as the probability of k successes in n Bernoulli trial. So, probability of equals and choose k, p k, s p and minus k. This, this is the probability mass function of a binomial random variable, but uh, this can be implemented in a much simpler way here. So, what we do is say I define small n as the number of trials say as 5 number of trials and n x equals this and so let me call this v. So, this gives me this v will give me an n times n a uh, capital N times small n array of Bernoulli random variable. So, all I have to do now is sum this across rows and get x. So, say x equals sum of v comma dimension equal to 2. So, sum this across rows and I get a column vector that will be binomial distributed. And run. So, this I have summed it across two dimensions. So, I get x which is binomial distributed. So, I can actually tabulate x. So, I can use yeah, I can use tabulate and see this I can use tabulate and this runs 
and this is a probability mass function for a binomial random variable with the parameters I can obviously change this parameter to 4 and run it again and here it is. So, in this lecture we have basically seen some examples of generating different random variables from the uniform random variable. In the next lecture we will talk about the physical significance of uh, random numbers and how do we interpret them and how do the laws of large numbers which are very important for random variables play in the context of random numbers. Thank you. Thank you.